welcome back to Deck Hockey Focus. The NBA 2020 Summer Tournament is not affected by uh, the world at large right now. We just got done, wrapped it up. Uh, the money's been issued. Everybody's got their medals, and we're going to kind of run down and give everybody that wasn't able to make it out there a breakdown uh, of all the different leagues and things like that. So, uh, Shackelford, what a tournament. Can I just say? I didn't even think we were going to have one, and here we are doing a recap. I know, right? Super excited that we were able to get it in. More excited that the teams from out of town were able to make it. Um, as you know, unfortunately, the Canadians couldn't get across the border, but regardless, I think uh, – the tournament was exceeded my expectations for sure. Yeah, it, it was still an, an astounding turnout. Uh, that, you know, despite you know some people not being able to travel, whatnot. Um, but uh, when it comes to, I guess, league importance, I would say probably the future of the game is the most important. Let's start with juniors because that was all of my predictions were wrong in juniors. Let's just start there. Uh, oh, so so run it, run them through it. What happened in juniors? All right, fair enough. So I think they're going back to back to back here, but Pittsburgh United taking down who we thought were going to be the opponent, Yoli, who actually got upset in the semis. So they, they won nine to nothing against Chicago Lightning. So first time that Lightning team has joined us in the Quad City. So super hyped for them to make it in the finals. But that Pittsburgh team, again, it's like going back to back to back. They are there. No yeah, well, I was going to say three for three. They're like a total three peat right now. There's something. Yeah, they're no joke, and they're a great team. So kind of the challenge to the other junior teams is how do you match that, and what do you bring next year? Because I don't see anybody kind of beating them right now. They won 9 and up in a championship game. So real quick, just want to shout out uh, Sammy Traeger, three goals, one assist. Uh, Caden Duran, three goals, zero assist. Uh, Nick Valena, two goals, one assist. Uh, Kyle Duran, one goal, two assist. And – Last, certainly not least, and in my opinion, the most important, Joey Moore with that uh, with the shutty. Big shutout in a big game. That's huge. Yeah. So the other thing here, and we talked about, uh, you know, just a little bit how dominant Pittsburgh is in this uh, junior division. They outshot Chicago thirty-eight to nine. I mean, they play a possession game, though. They 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 play above their skill level, at least from what we're used to around here with our our kids. I mean, they. They've got their systems down. They, they move the ball. They're no joke. And they don't take a game off. And I think the Yoli boys could have at least gave them a run for their money, but they took the day off. And you got to show up every shift of every single game throughout the entire tournament. And if you, if you slip, there you go. I'll get a quote Cade Freiberger on this one. Only the mailman walks. And... Only the mailman walks. <laughs> that is my new favorite saying. Cade Freiberger, you're a smart boy. I'd I love know to it. see you win some stuff, though. Exactly. So I, I think uh, whatever next year shakes out to be, that's, uh, you know, if you're going to face off against Pittsburgh, you're going to have to play your A game and they're, they're good. But uh, well, we saw them kind of run down. I mean, through the entire tournament, they, they put the hurt on some people. Like when you look, uh, as you were telling me, kind of, you look down the score sheet and it's Pittsburgh, 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 Pittsburgh. I mean, if they, if they smell blood in the water, they go all in. Oh, for sure. And if you just look at kind of how I broke it down, it's just leading points, leading goals, leading assists. And I even threw in pens just to make it interesting. And it's Sean Sinclair with leading with points, 21, 11, and 10. Yeah. Caden Duran leading in goals with 15, 18 total points. Uh, Sean Sinclair leading in assists with 10, 21 total points. Also leading in total points in that one. And then pens, Sean Sinclair again with 12 pens. So if that kid stays on the deck, maybe a little more. Those numbers are uh, a lot different for a lot of uh, a lot of people, but uh, like we said, they came to play. Yeah, yeah, and they had that little that little guy, they had, like know, a five year old right? kid. He got like an assist or a goal or something. I, I heard they were, I heard yeah. everybody going nuts. He was the cutest kid I've ever seen in the world. Yeah, I think he got a goal in the championship game or maybe the semifinal game. But this, <laughs> he's just a little guy. It was so awesome to see him out there and just. Chugging along with everybody. Dude, he knows what to do, though. Like, he's smaller than everybody, obviously, and, like, it's a little bit of a different situation, but he knows where to go. He knows what a left wing does and stuff like that. Yeah, it was, it was by far the most adorable thing in the tournament. It was, <laughs> it was fantastic to watch. Super glad, uh, super glad he got on the score sheet there, too. So, he's kind of rounding out top scorers, though. Uh, not, I'm sorry, not top scorers, but top goalies. And I don't think this is going to be a surprise. It's Pittsburgh, Joey Moore. Yeah, Five I mean, and he, oh. probably faced, he probably faced the, the least shots of anyone in the tournament, but, I mean, even, Still, that test, can be dangerous. even tested, 
the guy's not letting anything in. No, and even then, like giving up less shots is, you know, a little more dangerous to your save percentage there, but he still pulled out a 9.25 and in a point eight six goals against in the tournament. So, Which is insane. He, yeah, you can't take it away from him. And, Those are insane numbers. <laughs> yeah. I do want to throw out just kind of an honorable mention there, though, the Aiden Stair from Yoli. He did go five and one with an eight nine two and a two goals against it within the tournament. So he definitely played, you know, well enough to get him there. Um, you know, just couldn't get past Chicago in the semifinals. So I did want to just uh, throw out the honorable mention there with Aiden. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, moving through back to the, maybe some adult hockey here. Do we start at the bottom and work work to the top? Up to you. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so the D five championship, and I want to, I want to actually pause for a second and say that if you're going to make a letter Kenny Shamrocks Jersey and you're not going to let us know so that we can get our hands on one, you deserve to lose. I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm, I'm irritated. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to disagree. Those jerseys were actually pretty sweet. They did a they really good nasty. job. With them. Let me I get know. my hands on it. I know. You guys got to pre-sale those. Like, I'll set your jersey or tournament fee with a pre-sale. Like, I would, I would have bought one. A hundred percent. But uh, that's a decent segue there because Letterkenny, the Shamrocks, uh, local Quad City team, did make it into the finals, but did drop seven to six to um, Chicago Old Man Strength, who were the parents of the kid team who made it to the finals. So maybe there's some uh, video happening at home right now of how to get, elevate that to the championship level for the kids, but. Uh, Congratulations to the old man strength from Chicago. They did get that championship in D5. Yeah, absolutely. 7-6 win there, important to mention. I mean, that was yeah, tight I, and I, I think you're gonna kind of see that at, at the various levels. I don't know how many uh championship games, how many semi and quarterfinal games we saw that went to either shootouts or OTs or, or whatever they ended up being, but like every single game was a game. Yeah. No, they were all pretty close. I across the board a lot of near OT, a lot of come from behinds, but uh, just want to shout out to uh, Josh Schwan and uh, Jim King. They're both scoring three goals a piece. So six of those seven goals came from those two guys. Uh, Letter Kitty, Ryan Gomez had four points, three and one, and Dan Muting with two and one. So there was a, there's a top heavy line that it looks like that, that was there, but uh, you know, if good for them, that's just, that's just good managing and putting together a roster. Yeah. But running on D5, again, the call-outs, I, this isn't going to be a surprise here because we're going to name some names that were in that game. Um, leading the league, there was Ryan Gomez with Letterkenny, uh, 17 points, 12 goals, 5 assists. Putting in but the basket, points, lead goals. With, yeah, letting goals as well. Yep, and then the assists, it actually did not go to either one of those teams. Nightshades, um, Quad City team, actually both of them. Uh, Nate Whelan with uh, six assists and Bush Lightning Shelby Womack with six assists as well. Fantastic. Yeah, those Bush Lightning Apple jerseys were nasty too. They got to let I, us know. I'm glad they uh, kind of changed it up a little bit from last year's to make them the apples. But uh, again, Ryan, Ryan Gomez led in points and goals, but also leading in pins with eight. I mean, are we seeing a trend though, is that the aggressive <laughs> players, the guys that are going 110, maybe they put themselves in those gritty situations, end up in the box a couple of times, but they also end up with the puck in the back of the net. Yeah, you never know. Like we're only on our second, but we're batting a thousand here. So yeah, you know, what about goalies? Tell me about goalies. All right. So goalies in this one, it's a little different than how we did the other ones. Um, just called out more like on a win percentage basis. There are goalies who did have four wins, but they played more games. So I just gave it to Justin Dixon uh, with Nightshade's four goals uh, or four wins, one loss. I'm sorry. Did throw an, uh, a 901 save percentage out there too, to two, four, four goals against. So nothing against that performance whatsoever. That's solid in the tournament play. But then uh save percentage though, kind of got beat out just a little bit uh, by Steve Miller. Did go to the championship game, posted a 906. And a three six nine goals against, and then the goals against the, again goes back to Justin Dixon with a two four four. So solid performance by Nightshades there. Just couldn't uh, kind of squeeze it out. And honorable mention, I do want to throw this out there is uh, Warren Kahui, um, who did have a nine zero one save percentage at three eight six. Not the best record in round robin coming in. Had a three two one, but that doesn't matter. What is on getting Sunday. shelled? Yeah, and it doesn't matter on Sunday. As long as you win on Sunday, that's all it takes, and that's what they did. So whatever Absolutely. they did uh, 
to figure that out, they got it done. And, you know, no slouch performance. They're over at 900 and less than a four goal against in uh, deck tournament play. That's fantastic. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, so now, again, in, in D4, again, we're seeing more out-of-town teams, which you know I have a problem with. I'm a hometown boy. Uh, but we saw Springfield up against Waterloo. Springfield, what is it, the, the Blanks? Yeah, the Springfield Blanks versus Waterloo Gators. And I didn't this have a one, chance to watch that one, but I caught a two couple out-of-town teams again. Yeah, and I honestly, I think that speaks to the parody that – not necessarily the parody, but they're in DA locations as well. So they play by the same rules and same rankings we do. So no mm -hmm. excuses from the Quad City teams about uh, them being there. They deserve it. Um, but the Waterloo Gators uh, did come out uh, just, again, I'm going to mention Warren Kahui's name again, because he did tie it along with his, uh, you know, partner in crime there, Pua Kahui. They each had two goals in that game. So he was playing on two teams, had to go damn near back to back on championship Sunday plus the play in games. That's not easy to do. Yeah. And he was able and those two were uh, able to get four of their five goals. But uh, again, call it to Mike Ryan at Springfield uh, with two goals, no assist, and then looks like he partnered up with uh, Nate Chang a lot there because he had two assists to counter Mike's uh, two goals. Oh, that's good, carrying the squad. Great games all, all across the board. So top scorers from D four. Oh, for sure. This is going to be a clean sweep from your champions. Um, Mackenzie Kane, points, five goals, nine assists, 14 total. Uh, Drake Frost led in goals with 10 and two. So 12 total points with 10 of those goals. And Mackenzie Kane, again, leading in assists with nine. So nine of his 14 uh, came with a helper. And we are going to take a little bit of a, you know, kind of left turn from what we were talking about. Neither one of those guys led in pims. <laughs> Who led in Pims? Uh, another Waterloo team, though, uh, the Bush Lattes. Uh, Dominic Buchanan had uh, 17 Pims in the tournament, which is getting up there. That's kind of a lot for not a lot of games. Goon. Yeah, for sure, right? Absolute goon. Hey, but every uh, team needs them. So moving moving to goaltenders, who, who, do we, who do we need to talk about with goaltenders? Because obviously with, you know, the number of games that – went to the wire and things like that. Who's, so who's one, between the pipes? This one's actually all over the board. Um, kind of interesting once I was running through all this, I didn't really see or project this coming just based on kind of how the championship Sunday kind of went down. But uh, taking the wins with Caden Wagner, Waterloo Gators, right? You're going to win six games if you're going to the championship game. And he definitely did that. Led the league. As you expect. Yeah, six, one, and one. So solid performance across the board. But uh, we had some early exits in D4 on Sunday morning. Uh, first games, one, two, and three, all got upside. Yeah. They all so got the axe right away. Yep. But uh, Andrew Collins with Schreiber took a save percentage of 9.28 and goals against at a 2.25. So that's a solid performance. And quite honestly, if your goal is putting up a 2.25 in tournament play, you guys got to figure out how to score some goals. Yeah. He did his job. But. Uh, and then just do want to call out uh, from the Bush Lattes, uh, Jared Lee had a 9.06 save percentage and a 3.25. So no slouch performance there either. And for you guys that are not familiar with a three on three game, anything above a nine on save percentage, literally just for a game, let alone a tournament, that's, that's borderline shutout territory. Oh, for sure. So like, I think, if you if you throw a nine five, that's essentially a shutout in deck hockey. It's it's insane. Well, who were we talking to? Was it Nick from Lemonster? And when he asked yeah. that question, and you know, I, again, just from a three on three perspective, an education perspective, like in tournament play, if you throw up an eight hundred in that, you, it's serviceable. Like probably some saves you could have made, but a serviceable performance. It's a winnable game. Yeah, eight, five, you did your job. Yeah, and, and over nine is spectacular. Yeah. So huge shout that's out to play. Yeah, and that's what we're seeing right now. All these teams that are, you know, going deep, their goalies are showing up for it. Well, don't let Patty see this, otherwise you guys will get ranked up. <laughs> Sorry. I but I pulled it playing. off the website. I'm sure to sure you can see it. Everybody can. Um, but you want to move to uh D three? Yes, and tell me some good news. I need some local teams. I can't have any more out of towners winning stuff. All right. Well, I can't give you local, but I can give you an NDA location. Um, All right. I will take it. All right. Springfield, six to four over Pittsburgh. Springfield pucks in D3. 
Six four. Um, Kevin uh, Stenard went two for two in that game. Four points. Jake Brandon and goalie. I don't know how accurate this is, so I'm putting it on here. One goal, one assist. Listen on the website. Mm. So if you got an empty netter or something in there, that's awesome because one goal. If this one assist, dude got an empty is. netter and an assist, is this? If he got an empty netter and an assist in a championship game, we need this guy on the podcast tomorrow. Oh, for sure. So somebody validate that for us once we release. I think we're going to do that tomorrow. Let us know, and we're going to bring him on because I want to know about that. There's no I can, way. I can see the assist, right? Because you're you're playing blue line in, so just one little quick tap, defenseman takes a rip, and it goes in. But that goal, I want to know about it. I want to clarify, and I want to hear how, if this happened, how know. it went down. Exactly. <laughs> so if if that's true, that might be the first goalie goal ever in the tournament. Yeah, I it might be the first goalie goal in deck that I've ever heard of ever. No, well, there's been one or two, but uh, in a tournament, no. So and a championship <laughs> game, nonetheless. Be serious, that's insane. Exactly. So if your goalie's going to score for you, you guys better get the win because he's uh, definitely we're doing him more down. than his job. We're going to let him down. They got a they got a they got a last minute ad that's wearing his extra jersey or something. I bet you. <laughs> um, but, but either way, way, congrats to you. Oh, for sure. And then just real quick shout outs to Pittsburgh. Uh, Kenny Caldwell with three assists in that game. Justin Miller, two goals. Uh, watched a lot of the Pittsburgh games. Those guys are good. So, meaning for me, that just means what Springfield's able to bring to these tournaments now is they're up and coming and they're tough teams to battle. For sure. But uh, interesting side note in this game, we talked about penalties and we're going to talk about it again. 0 for 7 on the power play for both teams combined. Wow. Wait, so neither team scored a single power play goal? Nope, they had seven. Uh, Springfield had three, Pittsburgh had four, and they went over. Well, that baffles me because the the skill level that I've seen in D3 right now, it, like at the, D, at the D2, the D3, and the D4 levels, everything I feel like just – everything jumped up at least a half a point. For the last year. Elevated. Like, I was looking at some teams, and I'm like, oh, this is a D2 game. And they're like, no, this is my D3 team. And I'm like, whoa, you guys are sick. Like, how is this team legal? And they're like, they tell me, oh, we're playing against this guy and this guy and this guy. And I'm like, holy cow, is this is a D3 tournament right now? And then to stack on that there's no power play goals in a championship game is baffling. Well, that's that's one of the my, one of my big takeaways from D three. So not only the gameplay, which is absolutely nuts, but those guys are running systems. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't just run and gun uh, hockey. Just get ball, go to the other way. Those guys are running lines. They were running matchups. They had systems in place, line changes, everything was yeah. ironed out. It's super impressive to watch and and to have it uh, kind of trickle down to that trickle down to that D three level. Not to take anything away from them, but it was. It's awesome to watch, and it just means that the competition level is just getting incrementally higher every year, and it's just going to get better, and I'm super looking forward to it. Yeah, and speaking of, uh, uh, tell me top scores. I know you've got, I know you've got a, a bunch of awards to give. So I'm going to give all of them to the Springfield Bucks. <laughs> and I'm not giving out the words. You guys did that all on your own. I'm just going to call it out. Kevin Savard, 15 uh, points, 8 and 7. Uh, obviously eight goals just said that, but do want to call Derek Rotz there from Caddies who did uh, tie for the weed with eight goals. Nice work, I'm Rossi. Call that, that's luck, probably. <laughs> no, Caddies did have a really good tournament. They just couldn't get through Springfield in the semis. That would have brought them there. So uh, congratulations, Rossi, there. But, uh, hey, Kevin uh, Stenard again, seven assists. Plus the league. And then, Pitt, and then Pims did not go to Kevin Stenard, went to Grant Wallace. Also with Springfield, but he had 10. <laughs> the Springfield <laughs> so they guys, they bang, man. They don't screw around. Yeah, so great team that they put together. Obviously, they have the offensive skill. They have the defensive skill to shut down that many power plays. And they have the kind of the grit to also lead there. So pretty well-rounded team. So then Which, between, the, between the pipes, is it all Springfield again? No, it's actually not. It's kind of all over the board here. So Jake Brandon, which is a solid goalie, how he's playing in D3, that's a solid steal. Uh, he went 5-1-1, one, one, eight nine one save percentage, four three four for the tournament. So he did like lead and wins. Uh, save percentage, this isn't a surprise to me because we see him in uh, season play, did play for the Deckheads. Uh, Joe Dare with a nine nine oh five. 
That's what I thought. Yeah. I knew he was double dipping this weekend. I just didn't know where. Yeah, he was playing uh, goalie for Edward Jones. And Joe's, Joe's probably the most unconventional goalie of all time. He's straight up Dominic Hoshik. Yeah. It's rental pads and just no brain. But he's so good at it. And he like, stops nobody, everything. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And he played really well. I watched a couple of their games. And, you know, he definitely earned that uh, 905 save percentage. But from a goal again standpoint, not too far off from those two guys. Um, from Brandon and Dare, we've got Taylor Payne from the Waterloo Decnoids. Uh, throwing out a 3-3-8, which uh, led D3 for goals again. No, oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> good for Dare. You know what? He did, he deserved he deserved a big old check, and you know, give him a smaller one. You know, or give him <laughs> give him a little bit of accolade there in uh, in the net if he can't win it out when he's out. But uh, move to D two. I just found out that Waterloo has an Irish mafia team that might actually give our jerseys a run for their money, which I have a problem with that. Yeah, I'm but, gonna say it's, I'm gonna say they're a half knockoff of our. Uh, our uh, um, deck hockey focus jerseys with the stripes down the sleeves. Yeah, that's I'm not hot. giving up. Our, that's a hot take. Well, I, it is. And they lost to B Local Bandits, boys. which is my D1 franchise, putting it together in D2 for the summer tournament, which I'm a big old fan of. Yeah, so Irish Mafia Waterloo, the great team. And honestly, um, just kind of joking with the jerseys, I still think mine are better, but that's okay. Yours are pretty sick. <laughs> uh, no bias whatsoever in that statement. So, <laughs> um, but uh, three to one, BD Bandits, close game, all yeah. the way, close game. And I mean, when you're playing three to one, there's not a lot to call out here other than uh, Dylan Koch, Grant School, Rudin Parker, Hanson, all net and one for BD, and then uh, Cameron Priest, who's a solid player out of Waterloo, really good guy. Played with Toronto last year in D one, um, got Waterloo's only goal. But oh, that's fantastic. Well, and then. I mean, I, I don't know if you're if you're moving through uh, the game. I, I only had a minute to watch it just with everything going on. I caught the very tail end of it, and what I saw was just lights out goaltending. I mean, obviously yeah. in a three-to-one game, that's what you're going to get, but Sam Nelson playing D1 and D2, which is not easy when it's 96 degrees on a Sunday. No, Nine, he, he was lights out, let me say. just I know this is jumping ahead, but in D1, he was – absolutely and utterly lights out i did not know that he was double dipping again yeah so only obviously the one goal against right they won three to one he had a nine eight oh save percentage in that game and we talked about it a minute ago anything above a nine is that's a plus work a nine eight does not happen well a nine three two from waterloo yeah i mean right? that's just well, and I wonder how much of that is, is attributed to just lockdown defense. Because we see the low scoring game, maybe the goalies are standing on their heads, but maybe also the defense. I mean, it's, it's an under, I guess, an underreported category since there's no real way to track it, you know, with block shots and all that stuff. But I think a lot of these teams realize that everything is do or die and we can't give up any chances, you know? So everybody's got to take what they're given. Oh. No, for sure. I think next year, let's let's recruit somebody to track Corsi for some of these. Yeah, that doesn't sound like my job. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it either. <laughs> That's what we're going to have to recruit. But I think it's an interesting point, though, like the block shots, you know, obviously the Corsi score. But, you know, what is the defense actually performing to? And both of these teams in a 3-1 to one D2 game, D2 in the tournament is D1 regular season. Absolutely. So this is no joke of a game. And to be able to pull out a 3-1 to one victory, obviously your defense has to be a part of that. Yeah, I mean, you can trust the goalie behind you, too. It's like, okay, if I can force a guy for a bad shot, my goalie's got it locked down 100% of the time. Yeah. You know, make it work for everything. And the, no, the, the D2, the whole tournament, was just white knuckle action. I couldn't believe it was a D2 tournament play. No, it's, it's kind of like we talked about D3. It just makes D2s just that much better and just yeah. elevating the game. And those are great games to watch. And I was going to play in that league, but uh, had other commitments, so – given what I'm looking at here, kind of glad I didn't. Dude. I was <laughs> you supposed to too, play right? as well. I don't even know who I was supposed to play for, to be honest, because I broke my arm. I've been focusing on that. But so similar to Sam Nelson kind of double dipping and going D1 uh, 
and you know D two, there was a lot of other guys that were also double doubling up and playing on the, the top two levels. Yeah, and, and you see that the uh, the highest point scorer here with BD with Barry. He had four and five, which is actually we're going to see some low numbers here coming out um, with 11 total points. He led the league there. Uh, I'll give Barry credit, too. I think he played a third-line role in D1, but he did a hell of a job doing it. He had an early goal against Deckheads, um, which might have been his only goal of D1, but he embraced that third line, took a leadership role, and really just went out there every shift and did his job. So kudos to Barry for not only taking home the points, but also his play in D1. That was, his hands he did, he had a great tournament. Way. Yeah. If, if anybody has a chance to watch Barry just handle the ball, it's magical. It's pretty solid. Yeah. Then, yeah. Won't give you his uh, shootout move, but if you do have an opportunity to see it, watch it because it's it's mesmerizing. I'll uh, put it back. Um, but kind of moving on, goals. Uh, the next two categories, goals and assists, we're going to go and we're going to stay with the Waterloo Irish Mafia. Cole Latusic played D1 as well um, with Factory of Fear, but uh, he led that league with nine goals. And then assisted by, with total six, leading the league, nine total points, Kyle Kyle. Definitely same line. Yeah, with full total, they're both stud players. Like, they're great players. Uh, that Waterloo Irish Mafia team is solid. So, nothing, uh, nothing to take away from those boys. Dropping a three-to-one game is heartbreaking, and obviously play their uh, hearts out to get that free entry for next year, which I think is a really good prize, by the way, which nobody's talked about. Yeah, no, that, that is actually kind of sweet. It gets everybody kind of riled up, gives you a reason to kind of get motivated and come back next year because your entry fee is paid for in the D1 and D2 if you uh, take the consolation prize. And then you just take them straight cash if you win next year. Yeah. Well, exactly. Plan for it. Like, if you got to the championship game, like, you're doing some everything right. Maybe just make some one or two adjustments. And well, and I like that, too, things I think it, it encourages, uh, like, repeat matchups or – you know, like, oh, you were in the championship last year? Just hit the reset button. Try again. Well, exactly. I was going to mention this later, but we might as well talk about it now since we're talking about it. But what you're seeing is, like, across the board here, with the exception of a couple teams, are the ones that are going deep, they're going far, they're franchises. They're yeah. not teams that are thrown together. Like, we're not, gonna, yeah, we're not just going to – yeah, we're not going to put all-star teams together. Hey, this guy had a really good season. This guy, that guy, this guy, let's go. Yeah, These are no players. chemistry at all if you do that. And honestly, you know what? And I, I'm probably jumping ahead here into D1, but I saw that with our boys. You yeah. know, with the young guns, every single one of those players is a great player. Every single one of those players can – they're a great addition to any team. They did not have the time, I think, to be cohesive as a unit. And at, at that level, it's just so hard. You know, oh, but if you don't have that eyes in the back of your head pass, you're screwed. You can be as good as you want. You don't have time to think your head. You have to know. Yeah, now, like, since we're talking about it, might as well. Like, I'm super proud of how, the, how those kids, you know, all came about from the start of the tournament and how they finished in, into the money round on Sunday. Like, brand new team. Some play, maybe one or two play on the same team, but not on the same lines. And some maybe with like high school coming up. But that was a brand new team just put together and how they were able to build game to game to game to game and had to play the uh, play-in game on Saturday night to get to Sunday and pull it all together to win. I, Shut that went, I think I came back. I don't know who's uh, back at, you know, kind of DHF headquarters there in Tent City, but I came back as like, I think I'm more excited for those kids winning that game than I have been to ever win a game. I was getting pretty honest. All right. We're, we're completely and utterly off track. <laughs> D, D2 – uh, give me penalty minutes and goalies. I got a prediction for goalies. Well, it's, I'm not going to bet you <laughs> because it's pretty obvious, but uh, Dylan Koch, uh, 16 pins for BD Bandits, uh, which, again, I think kind of brings back to that defense-minded, gritty game. Uh, low yeah. scoring, not a lot, and he went out and got it done. He's a great player. Um, but goalies, go ahead. Yes. It's got to be Sam. Is that your final? Nobody throws up a 9-8. It doesn't clean out goalie categories. Do you want to bet on it? No. Are you sure? I feel like you wouldn't be saying that if it was true. Okay, do you want to bet or not? No, thank you. Well, you should have because Sam swept it. Call me out. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, Sammy, 3-1, 9-1-5, 3-6-7 goals against. 
I don't think there's anything else to say there. Uh, for playing D1 and D2, Tim had a hell of a tournament in both leagues um, with Garden State, too, when he was playing in D1. So congrats to Sam there. He definitely earned that one. And Dude, he's going to be competing for a USA spot. He, the way he played this weekend, you've got to give mean, him a look. He just proved that he can compete. Obviously, they had kind of a heartbreaker loss there in OT shootout, you know, versus Lemister, who ended up going on to win. And he's just, he's currently proved that he's too good for D2. Well, what, the highest what? level of D2 that we've ever had, he just crapped on everybody. Well, and you have to remember, like, when we had the kickoff show with Patty and Nick, that was one of the talking points for Nick, or what he mentioned was that this is the 50, 50 top U.S. guys right now that are getting looks, right? Of course, there's others that are out there, but these are all names that have been part of Team USA in the past or, you know, played on the juniors. And this tournament for them not only was his tournament to win, but was to see what Team USA is going to start to look like moving forward. And there's no way you can pass up Sam Nelson's performance here. You just can't. And if that's not what he had in his mind going into this tournament, I'll guarantee you that there's at least one person that does. Yeah. Somebody's uh, got to be looking for it. Sammy had a hell of a tournament, and, you know, there's no surprise there that he swept T2. It, it was fantastic to watch. So I think that's honestly the perfect transition to move, you know, over to the D1, which was crazy. I thought that with, you know – the whole border shut down and the Canadian teams can't come this year. And, you know, what's the competition going to look like, you know, are the deckheads just going to run away with it? I had a million thoughts going through my head. Oh, for sure. And if you look back at just round robin play, I mean, it was clear that the deckheads were the most dominant team in round robin. They showed that with their record coming in, but they were also, that's also the time we talked about it earlier to adjust and learn the game. So you had Lemonster coming in, but, Which, by the way, Quad Cities, Lemonster. I know it's pronounced or phonetically. Oh, Lemonster. yeah, yeah. Lemonster. I said, that, I said that in the interview with Carter, too. I was like, the Lemonster team. Like, you, if you're going to root for them, you got to learn how to pronounce it. It took us a minute, too. It's fine. Go back to our old videos. We screwed it up at least six times. Uh, <laughs> for sure. But, uh, but, but so the deckheads, the deckheads did come out, and they were pumping. I'm not going to take that away from them. But – Garden State, wasn't it Garden State that took them to the wire and tied them? They tied them in the last round robin game, yeah. And that's kind of, that's what I was getting at too. So it's perfect is that in round robin, the early games, it was, you know, you had Lemons for the 74s and Garden State, like learning, they're clearly established five on five teams and they're great at that, but they had to learn and adjust the three on three game and had to do it on the fly. And you saw them build game after game after game, understanding the little nuances of it. And obviously, women's are getting to the finals there. Garden State dropping a heartbreaker. Um, or not a heartbreaker. It was a hell of a game um, against women's. Deckheads took out our boys at uh, DHS. But uh, nothing against those guys, too. I they think played they played great. Uh, you take away those two empty net goals, it's a three-to-one game. Two That's of a three-to-one game. And we gave them, we gave them an, a scare. Yes. Yeah, take away the two, power, or the, the two empty netters, it's three-to-one. Three of those, or two of those goals scored on the power play. So, Lemonster 74s, you're welcome, because without the DHF Young Guns absolutely rattling them and taking them to the end of their rope, you guys never would have won. We paid for the, the. That's what the history books, I mean, we're the one memorializing <laughs> it. That's what it is now. I think we write the history books, so that's pretty clutch. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, Lemonster, we've talked about it, uh, taking that one home five to four against the Deckheads in overtime. Now, before we get into this, what I want to talk about, too, is kind of Lemonster's roster. Yeah. And that they, they came – like, they were scrambling at the end, Dude, right? Like, there's turmoil a lot going on. by a long shot. There's a lot going out on on the East Coast more than we see here in Iowa, so they were only able to bring seven guys against the full nine bench. And, it's again, it's like 95 degrees on Sunday. One of their guys went down. They had a casualty. Yeah, so they played that championship game with six guys which is not easy to do in that level of play. And they were able to pull it out 5-4. Honestly, one of the best games or the better games I've seen in a while with the back and forth action. Hell of a game. Well, and I think a lot of the local guys aren't going to – they're not going to realize who, for one, Garden State, who they are. They're not going to know who Lemonster – also, we need to clarify what the difference between the Americans and the 74ers is. I don't understand. I'm having a tough time with that. 
if I remember correctly, and boys uh, in Lindister, uh, feel free to chime in. It's been like a year and a half since we talked about it. Feed me. You've got um, the Americans and you've got the Rams. But when they come together, they come together as a 74s. I can dig it. I can dig it. I like the tournament team. But the thing that the local guys aren't going to realize is that, yes, they were running a skeleton crew so that they could come here. These guys are no joke. Like both the Garden State and Lemonster, be it Americans, 70, whatever, they mess things up in five on five on a regular basis. They are no stranger to victories against top level opponents. So, you, you know, you think there's some team washing through town. That's not what it is. These guys are on a mission. When they show up to the Quad Cities, they know why they're here. And they're, and like Mock was saying, these guys are players. They're good. Top to bottom, there's not a bad player on either one of those teams. And just watching their warm-ups and how that – their wrist shots just – ever so you, can, you don't even know they shot it. It's just gone, tanked down. And their clappers going 100-plus miles an hour is just insane. Yeah. But <laughs> you want to dive back to the championship game? Yeah. I mean, speaking of clappers going 100 miles an hour, can we talk about the Deckheads big ad? We're in the 55, doing it justice. Yeah, we can in a minute. All right. Uh, I did just want to call out the just kind of who scored there, and then we can circle back on uh, number yeah, yeah. 55. Yeah, yeah. Let's revisit the game here before I get off track for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. If you haven't listened to the show, we do this all the time. Uh, Jack Kendall, 2-1, and one, 3 in that game. Bobby Hauser, 2-0. and oh. uh, You know, two goals, zero assists, uh, two points. So that got them, uh, you know, four of their goals. And then Nick Carter, who's 1-1, one and one, who absolute stud. Logan Berger on 9-6-7 save percentage. Uh, Stopping 26 to 30 shots. Uh, so for the deckheads, before we get into number 55, I think we need to talk about number one five. Yeah. Okay. So not a hundred percent sure what happened to him, but noticeably absent was Pat Levesque the entire tournament. And I mean, if there's a dominant player out there, Pat's got to be talked about. And losing him is losing a line, basically. For sure. And Pat played the, the first game. Point. Yeah, he had an injury in the first game, sat out uh, not only the round robin, but uh, kind of the semifinals too, and came back from the finals and got it done. Like he was two and one. He had three points in the game. And, and in signature fashion too, you know, the total like back end move, just I'm going to take my time. I'm going to box out basically. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it. I'm a focal point. And I'm either going to dish or I'm going to snipe. You got to deal with me. I'm a, I'm a body. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Yeah, and he sniped. He had two of those, and they're both rips. I remember watching them. And to do that, like, with the injury and, like, having to load up like that, it could not have been easy. Yeah. And just the, you know, the pain that was probably kind of circulating through there. But two and one, two goals, one assist for Patty. Uh, Johnny Ruiz, two assists. And then uh, Marty with the uh, 808 save percentage stop in 21 to 26. But and a barrage at the end, too. Mm-hmm. And the like as the game to- wore on, he was facing a lot of high-quality shots. No, that, that was just a spectacular game on both sides. I don't let the stats steer you there, D1. That was – Marty played his ass off the entire tournament. It was well, absolutely the thing, ridiculous. The thing to mention in D1, too, is like – I mean, and you see it exponentially on the power play. A lot of times these guys don't shoot unless they're, unless it's going in, you know, like how many times you see Nick Levesque shoot, miss the net or shoot and you know, the goalie makes a save or something. It's gotta be a spectacular save because they're, they're isolating that one T or they're isolating, you know, that bomb from the point or something where it's a high percentage shot. So that's when we talk about the save percentages, that's why is because these guys shoot to kill. Well, it, it's a good thing to mention. I'm glad you did that for power plays. And like you had talked about, it's one shot, one kill. It's sniper style. And what you have to understand in tournaments with one minute penalties, goalie covers that up or gets a save. You're not, Russ, not getting that ball back until you rip it out of my hands. I'm going to take 10 <laughs> or 15 seconds off that clock. And not only that, we're going to slow change. One guy's going to go back and slowly change with another and take another 15 off. Yeah. So you miss your. You gotta relace your glove here. You got time exactly. a shoe. Hey, it's ninety-five degrees. I need some water. Sorry, my health is important, right? Yeah. Um, so 
not taking that one shot, one kill approach, defense can easily burn half your power play just on that one shot that missed. And I'm not going to take it away from the deck heads. They're bust at it. I didn't look at the power play like percentage, but they're lethal. They're yeah. absolutely lethal. Well, and, they, and there were penalties in that game. Yeah. So I was, I, and I, I haven't looked back at what the, you know, percentages and things were, um, but it did seem like Lemonster figured out the deckheads. They're a highly practiced team. They're very regimented. Everybody knows where their X's and O's go. But if you're the kind of person with a marker board, you can put those X's and O's on a marker board the night before. And as long as everybody's paying attention, we can plan. You know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it, I think that's what it came down to is they said, okay, they do this every time. You know, they're either going here or they're going here. They're either going here or they're going here. And I, I think I think that Lemonster, despite what I thought would be no legs, I think they figured it out. Yeah, and there were a lot of chances back and forth. But one thing I'll say, Lemonster did ridiculously well with block shots. Yeah. Those guys were, and not only necessarily with their body, but they're just their stick work. Their stick positioning, yeah. blocking passes, you know, shots out of play. Those guys were well positioned defensively and being on that short bench, you have to play smarter. And I think they did. And they were able to capitalize on space. Plus you ignore the fact that I think Bobby Hauser and Nick Carter are probably both six, seven a piece. I think <laughs> I'm over exaggerating, but they're big boys and they've got a lot of reach. They like, are. They can... Bobby Hauser plays like a foot taller than he is. Like the second he gets it, he like, he takes two steps and I'm like, is he in the, he's in the crease now. How did he get over there? Yeah, those boys, they can cover some real estate. And, you yeah. know, they're obviously smart smart players. They don't play for Team USA five on five and, you know, be the players that they are without understanding defense and how to position themselves there. So congrats to those guys. Um, but before we go on to, like, the leaders in that, you did want to talk about 5-5. Five five. Talk about, oh, yeah. Holy cow. So uh, I've, known that, I've known that Ruiz was going to be on the deckheads for a while, right? And then with the whole border shut down and then Yannick couldn't come. And I'm like, dude, that is a key element. That is an absolute missile launcher. Like, like you literally just have a gun turret that you always have to worry about. And now Ruiz is wearing his jersey and he just starts smoking them. I mean, right off the bat, he starts smoking them. Literally first play of the, the entire tournament, basically. He just takes an absolute clapper. And it's like, I'm trying to explain to the people next to me. It's like, dude, Marty has no choice or not Marty, uh, whoever's in net has no choice whether they stop that or not. It either goes in, misses the net, or hits the goalie. There's yeah, nothing. At, at that point, making those saves, it's the ball's decision. As yes. a goalie, you just have to go and this is where I think it's going and take up as much real estate as possible. And you just got to hope for the best, man. You, there's no one on this earth that can react to that. Yeah. It's well, a no. missile. And the, you remember the story of the tournament, though, when they're screwing around with the radar gun. Okay, so is this – this may be off topic for the freaking episode that we're trying to do here, but he shot, what, like 108, 109, something like that? And then he and he go left-handed? So here's how it goes. He, 111 on a strong side, 111 miles an hour. And then got a left-handed stick – it was like 86 or 87 with it. Yeah, I heard even – I heard 89, but, like, also, that's like Paul Bunyan status at that point. Yeah. Like, are you even real? Exactly. And that's – I think that was a huge pickup for Deckheads. Like, obviously a smart player, can't play defense, was, was playing defense for them, but so offensively minded in that connection mm-hmm. that he had with Nick uh, Levesque and then, uh, you know, Gordy. But now who they brought in on the team from their uh, team out east that they're playing ice with. Like, I think sure, they, sure, the Hattricks. Yep, they meshed really well together, and I think they, they didn't lose a beat. And that top line of Nick, Scully, and Gina Ruiz was absolutely filthy. Well, it, and, and they, they recovered well, like losing Pat and not having their, you know, tried and true – you know, lineups and things like that. But, dude, that top line is so nasty. 
it's almost it's damn near unfair, but it's it's awesome that they're able to do that. But what I think we need to talk about the Deckheads too is their actual roster this year versus last year. We talked earlier about, you know, obviously the Deckheads are a franchise and you want commonality, but I think they brought in four or five new guys this year. So they didn't you mean exactly the Deckheads? Yeah, they didn't exactly have that uh, you know, same systems they're able to play. So I think I mean, does Marty count? Does Bobby count? Well, yeah, but I mean, there, there's a lot of new, new faces to that team this year. And I think their ability to adjust and adapt speaks to their actual talent level and how they're able to play the game. That if, in theory, you know, 50% of your roster, let's just call yeah. it that, is able to be brand new and you can just drop them in and play like they did all tournament. Like that, there's something, there's a higher level going on there than, you know, is often recognized. And I just wanted to call that out. No, they're definitely a franchise to be reckoned with, but they've been called out two years in a row, man. That's true. I'm gonna start being a hometown boy again. <laughs> I like I love I love when out of town teams come. I, I'm I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I know there's a bunch of us out there guilty of rooting against the deckheads because they're like tired of seeing them win all the time and yada 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 and it's their tournament and blah 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 blah. We need to start rooting for the hometown boys. I'm done with it. Totally. I'm I mean, flipping back. About- well, think about it too. Like, you know, the Garden State parents and, you know, all their friends that came, they were rooting for anybody else. Why the hell would we be rooting for anybody else? I was rooting for Garden State. They're our hometown team. I was all deckheads. Like, we played. Well, I was all deckheads too. But then when we got beat out, I was like, dude, I want Garden State over Lemonster. And then I want Garden State over deckheads because I was, those guys are awesome. They're fun to watch. No, the way I look at it is, you know, we play with and against those guys all the time. Why wouldn't I root for people that we see three or four times a week? That's, that's who I want, but that's not how it shook out. Lindster was able to come in, um, take that overtime, which was a hell of a sequence coming up to that too, by the way. The scramble yeah. like saves left and right, and it just kind of popped right to the guy. I think Marty was out on the left-hand side, like kind of made, it, made a save, wasn't uh, able to recover, and like, it, not that he didn't do that, it just kind of popped yeah, right everything to the Everything happens in a half a second anyway. <laughs> Exactly. So no arm there, but that's kind of how the game unfolded is just a bounce went right to a stick and just banged it home. Yeah. Well, we've seen it in the five on five tournaments too, is that when, you know, time is at a premium, anything can happen. Anything can squirt loose. Anybody can grab it. It could be a third liner that ends up saving the day, you know, or, you know, literally anything can happen. You can score a full ice goal by accident because, you know, it took a weird bounce or something. Like, you never, ever know when it's the third period or overtime or whatever of a championship game. Just oh, everything's exactly. on the table. And that's kind of the OT strategy, right? You hear about it. You're watching the NHL playoffs right now. It goes to OT. Get the puck on net. Get the puck on net. On net, on net, on net. Because you don't know what those bounces are going to do. Exactly. And- Yo, so congratulations to Lemonster there. Glad you guys had a great time out here in Iowa. Hope to see you guys back here, same with Garden State. But before we wrap that, do we want to talk about kind of leaders? Absolutely. So, I, honestly, I, I don't know who the who the leaders were. I assume what Ruiz, Ruiz was crushing it in goals, right? Yeah, Ruiz uh, led in goals with 11. Okay, okay. I don't know if we covered that yet. No, but, we haven't. Okay. That's my only prediction. Other than that, I don't know. Marty did good. Something. Sam well, too, did good. You're not too far off, so I'll, leave, I'll just roll through it real quick. Jenner Ruiz, 18 points, 11 goals, 7 assists. Those 11 goals led the tournament. Those 7 goals tied for leading the tournament with John Scully, also a deck. Oh, wow. Deckheads across yeah. the board. Yeah, exactly. Top to bottom, deckheads on that one. And then in Pims, uh, I got Jared Bergeron with 11 from uh, – Lemonster. Ooh, I would have guessed, this is a hot take, uh, I would have guessed it would have been somebody from Garden State. Uh, based on how some of those uh, games ended up, sure, but uh, I'm not going to get into that <gasps> too much. A little, uh, little controversy, baby. We yeah. love it, but whatever. We're talking about champions. Uh, <laughs> next year's your year. I feel it, Garden State. I'll be wearing yellow. I promise you. I love you. <laughs> But uh, penalty minutes, you said, went to Lemonster, but uh, talk, talk to me about goalies. Uh, goalies, guess. Guess who? Uh, Just name the teams. 
Guess who oh, well, yeah, was. Wins has got to be Lemons here. And other than that, I thought Sam did well, probably. Or the Lemister goalie, did he get lit up ever? No, so here's how it shook out. Lemister, obviously, with the wins, 5-1. and one. Logan Bergeron. That makes so sense. Was, uh, save percentage and goals against went to Marty. Marty Fillion. 4-0, 1-1 one in the tournament. A yeah. 9-0-6 save percentage. So went over that 900 mark, and to do that in D1 is absolutely ridiculous. And what Marty's like 50. Well, remember the opening night, though, like with Nick and Pat, we were talking about it, and Marty was motivated because they were calling it the uh, minor leagues, right? So he got his call back up to the show, and Marty played like he got the call back up. Dude. He, he was ridiculous, and he finished that out with a 3-6 goal against. Unbelievable. So, Shackelford, off the cuff here, if you got a recruit tomorrow for your team, are you picking Freiburger? Are you picking Marty Fillion? Or are you picking Sam Nelson as your quad city local, local goaltender extraordinaire? Who am I going to take yeah. on my team if I'm general managing it? I'm taking Fry. You're taking Fry? 100%. Fry played his ass off in that tournament. He did. Court. He played he played it insane. Some I don't of know those if we're games, allowed to cuss on this episode or not, but Fry, you played amazing. Some of those games that we were playing are 2-1 to one against Factor or Fear, our second game. If it wasn't for Freiberger playing the way he did, that is not a two to one game. And yeah. how he was, how he kept us in and played the way he did all tournament, I'm not taking it away. And especially from him. against Waterloo. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And oh yeah, on the four to five game. When we also, did them. you see the? Did you see the one? It would have been uh, at the far end towards the scoreboard. Somebody dangled the crap out of him. I thought, and I thought fived him. And I was like, oh, there's nothing you can do. That's a great move. We gave up a breakaway, whatever. And he just stands up. He stands up with his glove above his head like this, like, like it's the end of freaking Breakfast Club. And I'm like, oh, did he stop that? And I'm like, there's no way. And yep. just in the glove, deal with it. No, I, I, I know the exact shot you're thinking because I was on the bench. And I'm like, ah. Damn, like, you know, hey, great effort, not on you. And he came back, he's like, yeah, I'm wrong. Like, <laughs> Great save. So, nothing to get Sam Nelson. Like we said, he played a hell of a tournament. And obviously, Marty did too, his stats say that. But I'm keeping with my boy. I'm keeping Fry. I can dig it. I can dig it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's good to see that these teams from out east are coming out and supporting our tournament. We've seen the Pittsburgh Gods do it in the past. We hope to see the Godfathers do it. James Brown, can you get through an entire interview? Testing you, bud. <laughs> um, but once we open up that Canadian border and the floodgates open, like I have no idea what D one is going to look like. It's going to be a zoo. Yeah. And that's just kind of, uh, what everybody's going to have to adjust. We talked about it earlier. I don't want to repeat it for the hundredth time, but D two elevating their game, D one's elevating their game, D three is elevating the game. And some of these teams that, you know, they want to be competitive, but they want to play with the, you know, people they know they're, you're going to have to start doing something different. And that's the unfortunate reality that as the competition gets better and these franchise teams continue to stay at the top, you're going to have to evolve your management style and how you recruit to react to this. Absolutely. Or unfortunately, you know, as competition increases, the, the reality is as people go here, it also means people go here. No, so I'm looking it. forward to it. it. It's, it's not even three days old and I'm already like itching for next year. So I'm exactly the same way, man. But Hey, the good news is, we had a tournament this year. I mean, our biggest fears are, are gone by the wayside. I feel like a, a kid the day after Christmas where I've already opened all my presents, you know, and now I just got to think about the past. Um, but, you know, we've got no place else to go but up. It's great seeing the buy-in from all the, the American guys, all the American teams from out east coming and, and supporting. And, I mean, honestly, everybody that just bought in for the entire tournament, it was a great one. And I didn't even think we were going to have one a month ago. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, even just with the environment that it is, and, you know, obviously things are scaled back a little bit to accommodate for that, but still great atmosphere, great energy, the, still the best weekend of the summer. I'm already looking forward to next year. Absolutely. Me too. Well, I think that probably wraps it up here. Congratulations to the Lemonster 74s. Uh, congratulations to the Deckheads. Congratulations to everybody that won and lost. I mean, honestly, every game that I watched was so much fun. I can't even imagine what, what, you know, the tournament's going to hold in the future. Thanks to everybody who came by and bought one of our t-shirts, by the way, like that's, that really helps us out. I mean, like, 
you know, we do this kind of stuff out of our own pocket and that's a way that we can kind of like recoup some of our losses to be perfectly honest. We have a few more. If you guys see us around, let us know. We've, we've still got a few sizes left. So uh, if you want to ask, let us know, we can, we can hawk you one. Um, other than that, thanks everybody for tuning into all the live stuff. Thanks to Landjet. Thanks to everybody for, you know, coming and interviewing and getting a break from the, from the, the heat and getting into the AC. I mean, just what a tournament, man. Can't wait to see everybody again next year. Yeah, for sure. And for anybody who's out of town, if you wanted a shirt and you didn't get a chance to get one, just shoot us a message. We'll figure out a way to get you on. Uh, we'll do that. And last but not least, I just want to say thanks to, you know, the city of Bettendorf and the Parks Department for everything they did. And then obviously, you know, I don't want to forget about Mid-American Energy and, and all they were able to do for the area in the matter of days to clean everything back up. That was a concern I had that what happens if we can't turn the power back on and they, they mobilized, and they got it done. And honestly, everything looked great, like nothing had happened before. So kudos to those guys, kudos to the city, Pat, Nick, everybody that organizes it. Uh, absolutely appreciate everything you guys did. And like we said, already looking forward to next year. And 2020 is in the books, guys. We'll see you next year.